If we go back a few years, VBA macros were the tool for automating everything in Excel. It was pretty much the only option. Well, we've now got many more tools to choose from, including Power Query, and many have abandoned VBA altogether in favor of Power Query. But what if we could use VBA to automate Power Query? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video with three examples of making Power Query easier to use with a bit of VBA magic. All the code is available in the downloadable example file, so check out the links below to get it. Once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. If you load your Power Query as a table and then create a pivot table from that table, you will know the pain of the double refresh. The first refresh to update the table and then the second refresh to update the pivot table. There's a secret setting in the Queries and Connections pane. If we right click on the query and go to Properties, it launches the Query Properties window. In there, we just need to uncheck Enable Background Refresh and click OK. And now a refresh will update the table and then the pivot table one after the other, all with a single refresh. But we have to do that for every query that loads to a table that we then use in a pivot table. So wouldn't it be nice to do it to all the queries at the same time with one click? But we can with VBA macros. Here is our VBA code. It loops through each connection and changes the background refresh setting for all of them. It toggles between the two options of enabled or disabled. And I've got this code saved in a module in my personal macro workbook. You can find this code in the example download file. Now, anytime we run this code, it automatically toggles the load settings for the queries in the workbook. And we'll see an example of this later on in the video. Just a quick side note from me, if you don't have a personal macro workbook yet, you can create one easily. In Excel, click View, and then Macros, and then Record. We don't care about these settings apart from the Store Macro In option, which we want to be Personal Macro Workbook. We can then click OK. We can do anything in Excel, such as typing Excel is awesome into a cell and then pressing delete to delete that value. Then from the macro button, we can click stop recording. This has created our personal macro workbook. If we press Alt and F11, it will open up the Visual Basic Editor. And you can see there that we have a workbook called personal.xlsb. That is your personal macro workbook. When you expand that, you can see that we have a module which contains the actions we recorded. Now we no longer need that code, so we can select that and press delete. But this is the place where we will insert all the code that we are using in this video. Then just press Alt and F11 to toggle between Excel and the Visual Basic Editor. The Power Query privacy settings are a bit of a mystery to many. The truth is they are only relevant if requesting data from a source that records queries, such as a SQL Server. If you're just using files and folders that you have access to via file permissions, there's no risk. And in these scenarios, we can ignore the privacy settings, which also gets us a faster refresh time. The good news is we can easily toggle this option with a bit of VBA magic. Here is the VBA code. All it takes is one line of code, active workbook dot queries dot fast combine. And then we just use not to toggle that option on or off. This code is also saved in my personal macro workbook. And again, this code is available in the example download file. Before you run this macro, just make sure you are happy to ignore the privacy levels. Then if you are, you're good to go. And we will see an example of this in action later on in the video. If you really want to save time with Excel and make working late a thing of the past, so you can spend more time doing what you love and with those you love, then you should check out our Excel Academy. It has everything you need to become an Excel ninja and save huge amounts of time. Just head over to excelfthegrid.com and check it out. 
Here I've got a custom function which removes any columns from a table where those columns contain all null values. And this is the function that I want to make available to easily insert into other workbooks. From the home ribbon, I will click advanced editor. I can now see all of the code for that custom function. I'll press Ctrl A to select all the code and then Ctrl C to copy the code. We can now close the advanced editor and close Power Query to get back to Excel. In Excel, I want to make my personal macro workbook visible. From the View tab, I will click Unhide. Then I can select Personal.xlsb and click OK. This now makes that workbook visible. I'll click on the plus symbol to add a new worksheet. Then I will rename that to PQ, which is short for Power Query. Next, I will select cell B2 and press Control V to paste the previously copied code. Then with that cell selected, I'm going to add a name to that cell and we're going to call that FX Remove Null Columns. When I press return, that will then create that named range. Now we can hide the personal macro workbook. From the View tab again, I will click Hide. Now let's view the VBA code. I'll press Alt and F11. All this code does is get the text from the cell named FX Remove Null Columns, which is the name of the cell we created a few moments ago. Then it adds a query with the name FX Remove Null Columns, and it uses the text from the cell as the formula, and it adds this into the active workbook. And again, this code is available in the example download file. We will see an example of this code in action in a few moments. We want these macros to be easily accessible because there's no point in having them if it takes too many clicks to find them. So let's add some buttons to our ribbon so we can access them with one click. We can right click on any space on the ribbon and select customize ribbon. I'm going to select the last item in the list on the right and then click new tab. Now we can select that and click rename. Let's rename this tab to My Tools, and then we can click OK. It has created a group. We also want to rename that. So I will select that and click rename. We will give this the name of PQ Tools, and then click OK. Next, we want to add our three macros. In the Choose Commands From dropdown, select Macros. And we can see the macros that we added to our personal macro workbook. I will select the first macro and click add. I'll do the same for the second macro and also for the third macro. Now let's give our macros nice names. I will select the first one and click rename. I will call this background refresh toggle. And I'm also going to select an icon. To confirm that, I will click OK. Now I'll go ahead and do the same for the other two macros. As you can see, I've updated all of those, so I will click OK. That creates our My Tools tab, and we can see on there we have the PQ Tools group, which contains our three macros. We've got everything set up. Now let's go and use it. Here I've got a workbook that contains some queries. Firstly, if I right click on a query and select properties, we can see enable background refresh is checked. Let's click cancel to close that. Now I will click the background refresh toggle button. If we right click on the query again and select properties, the enable background refresh is no longer checked. So that has been disabled. And this will be applied to all the queries in the workbook that have this option available. Next, in the data ribbon, if I click get data and then query options, it loads the query options dialog box. Under the privacy section of the current workbook, I can see the first option is checked. Therefore, the privacy levels are based on the options of each query. Now let's click cancel to close that window. I can now click the ignore privacy toggle button. And that's it. If we go back to get data, and then query options. When we look under the privacy section for the current workbook, you will see the second option is selected, which ignores the privacy levels. And the best news, 
This can give us a faster refresh time. Finally, my data imported into Power Query with lots of null columns, which I want to remove. I will click the Remove Null Columns button. That function has been added into Power Query and is visible in the Queries and Connections pane. When we go into Power Query, we can apply that function. I've got my query selected, so I will click the FX icon to add a new step. Then I just need to enter FX Remove Null Columns, which is the name of the function. You can see this function has a single argument, which is the table. For this, we can use the previous step, which Power Query has already added for us. When we commit that formula, we're done. We've now removed all of those null columns. And there you go, that is three VBA macros to supercharge your use of Power Query. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And once you've done that, we've got loads more Power Query videos on this channel. So go check them out. And I recommend starting with this one. It's got lots of great Power Query techniques. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.